How did you discover that Geoffrey had begun to be involved in crime? Um, well, really, one day when I was walking back home from school, from where I worked, um, my two younger boys met me and said that the police had come to our house and they were very distressed and, and I tried to calm them and say, I'm sure it's nothing, because Geoffrey at that time was taxi driving and I thought it was something to do with his um, motoring, you know, offence. Um, so I went home and, and found the police there and um, we went through this awful interview with them and the things they were saying were so awful. I said, could I leave the room, please? And they said, no, I'm sorry, but you must stay and listen. And I was just amazed and couldn't believe the things they were saying and felt that, that you know, I didn't really know what we were doing. Um, and then Jeff came to me afterwards, seemed very disturbed and upset, went out for a while and came back and said, would you like to go out and have a chat this evening? And um, we'll go for a drive somewhere. So. I sorted the children out, and um, and that's what we did. Um, and we went for a drive up the hill, which is nearby. We went on to Cleve Hill, and um, he stopped the car, parked and stopped the car, and just said to me, "I'm the person. Uh, I'm the man that they that they were talking about this afternoon. I'm the man that they they want." And uh, I just went into complete shock and, and relief and numbness and had no real reaction at all. I just couldn't believe it. And uh, I think he was a bit upset about that because he really wanted a reaction. He said, why don't you scream or shout or do something, you know. And I couldn't. There was just nothing in me that could rise to the occasion and carried on talking all evening. We went to a pub and sat and talked and then we came home. Once the children had gone to bed, we, we talked at home. And during the evening, I said to him, well, you know, is there anything else? I mean, I think we better... You're obviously going to go away. Um, so is there anything else that you need to tell me now? Is there anything else at all? And um, he said, yes, there is. I have also been involved in, in spying. And, um, well, <laughs> there again, you know, a double confession. I mean, I just didn't believe that either. Although in a funny sort of way... I could cope with that easier than the, than the um, other revelation. Um, and he, he eventually went up to bed and I just sat down and had some drink, which I don't normally do, but I had quite a lot of drink. I just didn't know what to do. I was desperate. And eventually I went to bed and he was, he was, I waited really till he'd gone to sleep and I just lay there most of the night just looking at him and, and just, in unbelief, you know, seeing the man that I loved and the man that I'd married and the man that I thought he was, or knew him to be really deep down, and yet this this other man, these other men that was all part of him, and, and I, I just, I just, you know, it was just an amazing night. I can't really put it into words how I felt about that. How much of a battle did you have with your conscience? I had the most horrendous three weeks of my life, I think. I just... It was it was dreadful. I, because, it, to begin with, I was the only person, I believe, in the whole world <laughs> that knew. And, I mean, that's, that's a terrible thing to carry. Um, I felt that we had been living a lie. We were still living a lie. Um, because we knew something to be that had happened and we were keeping that to ourselves and we hadn't got the right deep down I felt to do that. What tipped the balance was when I became a Christian during that time and it was almost as though it was just there waiting for me to find and um, and I believe before God that this was what I had to do.